In this example, we want to find f inverse of x if f of x equals 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. Note that we have a trinomial here, and also note that this trinomial is not a perfect square trinomial. So it can be a little tricky to find the inverse of this function. Well, let's start with our steps for finding the inverse of a function. We start with replacing f of x with y. All right. So we have y equals 2x squared plus 2x plus, uh, make that minus 1. Interchange x and y. OK, so we have x equals 2y squared plus 2y minus 1. So far, so good. But now the very challenging part, solve the equation for y. The key here, since we don't have a perfect square trinomial, is to make it a perfect square trinomial. And we do that using completing the square. Here's how we do it. I'll group together the terms with y's in them um, and leave some space. And out of those y terms, I'm going to factor out a 2 to the front. So we have 2 times the quantity y squared plus y. And then I'm going to leave some space. And then I have my minus 1 still hanging out here. Now for completing the square, you take your middle term, or your linear term, or your b term, however you refer to it. And you take that term. So in this case, it's 1. You divide by 2 and you square that result, squared. Take the b term, divide by 2, and square it, and then add it to both sides, or add it and subtract it in this case. But let's be careful here. So this is 1 fourth, so I'm going to add in 1 fourth. But if I were to sub just subtract off 1 fourth out here, that would be incorrect, because what we've actually done here is when we added in this 1 fourth, we've multiplied everything in here by 2. So we've actually added 1 half, not 1 fourth. So then I'm going to subtract off a 1 half to make sure I'm not changing the equation in any fundamental way. So I added 1 half, so I subtract off 1 half. All right, let's clean this up. So we have x equals, we can now, let's just see what we're working with here, uh, 2y squared plus y plus 1 fourth minus 3 halves. And now this trinomial here is our perfect square which we can rewrite as 2 times the quantity y plus 1 half squared minus 3 halves. When you do completing the square like this, it'll always give you a perfect square trinomial. I always think of it as taking the square root of this term, taking the square root of that term, the first term and the last term, and then the sign comes from this middle sign in your trinomial. That'll always give you what goes in this binomial squared here. OK, and now we have something we can actually solve. OK, so we have, this is all um, x equal this. So let's make that a little clear. So this is x equals that. So I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. x plus 3 halves equals 2 times y plus 1 half squared. Divide both sides by 2. Right, divide both sides by 2. That gives us x plus 3 halves over 2. So what I'm going to do here, we're starting to get a lot of fractions, I'm going to get a common denominator here on top. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2. That gives us 2x plus 3 all over 2, all over 2 again, equals y plus 1 half squared. And now when you have a fraction on top of just a number, like a over b all over c, this fraction bumps down one layer to give us a over b c. So in this case, we're going to bump down one layer and get this whole thing over 4. All right, so bumping everything down a layer, this gives us 2x plus 3 all over 4 equals y plus 1 half quantity squared. And now we're solving for y here, so we'll take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared. And remember, we add on a plus or minus when we take the square root of both sides. However, we want this inverse to be a function and so technically we're just going to take the positive value here. It depends how the initial problem was defined. Every once in a while you'll have one that forces you to take the negative value. But this one will say, um, we didn't define a, a domain in, in the beginning, but I think we should have. We, we could say um, in the very beginning of the problem, x is greater than or equal to, I think negative one half will do the trick. So if we do that, then that tells us to only take the positive case. but. 99.9% .9 of the times on these inverse problems, you only want the positive case. Okay, we'll note that square root of 4 is 2, so this is simply 
rad 2x plus 3 on the top all over 2 on the bottom equals y plus 1 half and finally subtract 1 half from both sides to get y equals rad 2x plus 3 all over 2 minus 1 half. But the final step of our process here is to instead of writing this as y this is the inverse function so then we write it as the inverse function. So I'll erase that and just write f inverse of x. And there you have it. One way to check this is to look in Desmos and make sure when you graph this function along with the original function they have a really nice symmetry about them. So let's check on this in Desmos. Well here we go, our blue function is our original function and the red function there is the inverse. And notice that really nice symmetry, I've added the, the green line which is just the diagonal y equals x. And if they are truly inverses they'll be perfectly symmetrical about that line and we can tell in this case they are. So some really nice symmetry there as you always find when you graph a function along with this inverse.